the first of the tropical waves are starting to come it's here. late July, so I'm kind of pushing it pretty close to when I shouldn't be this far north still. But um, so far so good. It's rained the past two days pretty hard. I had to bail my dinghy out three times yesterday. It was just pouring all day, so I was hanging out on my boat. To paint you a word picture of exactly what I'm experiencing right now, there's the pre-squall breeze that feels really awesome and laden with expectation. There are seagulls wheeling around a bait ball over there. You can see the rain building in the mountains. Reggae music is wafting gently from the beach bar and the faint smell of spliffs is floating on the breeze. I'm ready to close all my hatches when the rain starts, but I'm trying to let the whole boat breathe as much as possible in between each bout of rain. This is a Caribbean apricot, I've been told. This is what it looks like when it's cut open. And this is what it looks like on the tree. There's this guy who comes around to the boats and sells fruit and veg, and he gives really good deals. He's been hooking me up with a lot of island food. So right now, this, this tastes kind of like... Papaya mixed with mango, mixed with apple maybe? but it's kind of hard. I think if I let the other one sit and ripen a little bit, it would probably be really soft and juicy inside. I also have papaya, avocados, mango, star fruit, limes. He told me that the way to eat papaya is to cut it open and then squeeze lime over the papaya slices, which I've never even heard of before. So I'm gonna try that when I open the papaya. Which will probably be today because it's super ripe. So, what are you doing? It's raining. Eat your body weight and fruit. It is laundry day. All my sheets are out in the wash. Here you can only drop off your laundry at the cheap laundromat. So I'll pick it up tomorrow. Luckily I have one spare sheet. And since it's raining, my boat's kind of a mess. So I just keep pulling everything inside and then putting it outside again to try to dry it. Rainy days on board are um, a little bit of a challenge. So yesterday it poured all day and that was actually kind of nice because it felt good. It was cool and it was an excuse for me to just kind of lie around and do nothing all day and listen to music. Day two of a rainy day starts to get old. Everything feels damp. There's not really much to do down below. It's a small boat, and when you're confined to it all day, not sailing, life can get a little bit dull. I've been doing boat projects in between rainstorms and uh, walking around, so getting wet a lot, but just trying to keep my life going as much as I can. And here comes the rain. Black. It's finally stopped raining and there's an absolutely beautiful sunset. It's dead calm because all the squalls and rain just sucked all the wind out of everything, but it's so nice to finally be able to step outside again, wipe all the water out of the cockpit and sit down and watch the sunset. Even though it's hot because there's no wind, it's just so gorgeous to see everything reflected in on itself. Living through all this rain on a boat, you really feel how it changes your whole life. So when the rain is gone, it's like this beautiful, glorious release. So tomorrow, I'm taking off for Soufriere, which is in the south part of St. Lucia, and apparently super gorgeous. Really sad to be leaving Rodney Bay. I've met some awesome, awesome people here, but life must go on. So, up and out. Leaving Rodney Bay. There's Pigeon Island. It's been an awesome time here. I've had so much fun and met so many amazing people. Now it's time to go. I'm heading towards Soufriere and the Piton. I just upped anchor and sailed off the anchor because there was a lot of room. So I upped the main, hauled up the anchor, and then pulled up the jib. Feels really good to be able to sail off the anchor and not have to turn the engine on at all. I feel accomplished. <laughs> I'm going um, 0.8 knots. It's a great day. Uh, started out with really awesome wind. I think part of the problem is that I'm just in the lee of St. Lucia, but since I'm only going 20 miles south, 
and still on the island. I didn't think it was worth going all the way out there. Now I'm thinking maybe I should try to head out. Then again, there might not be any wind out there and I'll just be stuck even further out. So in the meantime, I have uh, put out my fishing line. There's the little majig and it's being towed behind the boat. And I also, in very exciting news, have made a gaff for that time when I catch the most enormous fish in the world or a whale or something. Uh, so what I did, so I bought a hook at the hardware store and I lashed it on to the end of my broom handle. So it's a dueling broom slash fish hook and don't worry, it has this thing on it so I don't stab my eye out with it. But this is how I lashed it on. I did three lashings to attach it and then I put these screws in on either side so that it didn't have lateral movement. And this thing is solid, it does not budge, like it's not going anywhere. And then when you take this off, voila, we have our hook. And then on this side, you can screw in the scrub brush, you can swab the decks and catch fish at the same time. I also use this to drop my wind vane rudder down and attach it. So it has three purposes. Uh, also, it looks cool, so four purposes. Even though it's a slow sail, it's such beautiful scenery coming down the coast of St. Lucia. I decided to stick closer to shore because I don't think the wind's going to be any different any further out. And if I totally just have to motor, at least I won't have put myself, you know, five or six miles offshore. So I'm just enjoying the, the views and the sun and the light wind and the no splashy waves in the cockpit. I'm really excited to get to Soufrière. I'm going to miss my Rodney friends, but... I've heard it's really beautiful and the pitons are crazy. Thanks for watching this week's video. I'm, at this time, I am in the Grenadines, so well far away from rainy, nasty, squally situations. Thank you to my patroons who are continuing to support me and make my life possible. Thank you to Tish for uploading these videos. If you guys want to support me on Patreon, I'm including a link to that webpage in the info of this video just below it. If you want to follow me on Instagram and see better updates on where I currently am versus where my videos are, which lag a little bit, uh, my Instagram majig is at Boat Blizzard. I post photos every couple days and stories about where I am and always let you know um, the approximate geographical location of my boat so that if, if you see a big storm coming or something, you can be like, ah, she's not going to get hit by it, or ah, she needs to move. Thank you for watching and subscribing and liking and commenting all of your lovely comments. I really like them all. I also want to give a shout out to all of the amazing people that I met in Rodney Bay, starting with Shelby and Saida, thank you guys so much for inviting me to your baby shower and letting me participate in all the fun games. Guys, if you have not been to a baby shower in St. Lucia, I am telling you that you've not actually been to a baby shower. This was my first one, but I do know what happens in American baby showers, and I will tell you that they are nothing compared to this. This one was so much fun and full of life, like full participation, party, exciting, fun, happy, um, you ruined me for all other baby showers. So congratulations, I'm really excited for you guys. Thank you to Jemmy for the lovely conversation and getting us tickets to the Mercury Engine Festival, which actually had nothing to do with engines. It's more like um, a big beach party, so that was cool. And of course, Karim for all the fun that we had on St. Lucia and showing me around and introducing me to your friends and showing me some local foods and all the adventures that we went on together. You guys all made St. Lucia my favorite place in the Caribbean so far, so everywhere else has that to live up to. <laughs> um, I really wish that I had some video footage of anything that I did with all of you, but it just felt so real that I didn't want to put a camera between us and kind of make me into a photographer rather than just Holly the person. So that is something that I'm not good at. 
but I'm also okay with it because some experiences I just want for myself. If I ever come back to the Caribbean, Rodney Bay is 100% on the list. But if you guys tune in next week, you'll get to see Soufriere, which is in the south of St. Lucia and just so beautiful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next.